Let's go next to Florida State and Georgia. The two teams that narrowly missed the college football playoff. And it's crazy, too, because both rosters are going to look very different from when we saw them in the regular season just a couple weeks ago. 26 Florida State players have entered the NCAA transfer portal, and seven have decided to declare for the NFL draft. They're going to opt out of the Orange Bowl game, so they're going to be at about, gosh, 53 scholarship players in this game, thereabouts. Not going to be easy for Florida State when you think about the fact that one guy that entered the portal is back, that's Joshua Farmer, but other than that, they're going to look very different than what they looked like in that 13-game regular season. If you look at Georgia... Uh, They have had 15 players under the portal, uh, but they've brought in four players and really none of those players decided to go to the draft. So there should be in a pretty good spot. Marvin Jones Jr. did transfer to Florida State, but he's not draft eligible. So Bulldogs should be pretty much intact, at least at the moment. Like I said, it's not really 100% certain, not 100% certain, but as of right now, Cedric Van Pran, their center, is going to be playing. Malachi Starks, he's going to be playing. Sounds like Brock Bowers uh, is dealing with an injury, so it's not likely that he's going to be available for the Orange Bowl. But still, Lad McConkey might be back. These are all things that we're still trying to figure out. But at the moment, it should be pretty good for the Georgia Bulldogs. When you look at what Florida State has, Florida State has excellent personnel. They have really good players. So we're going to get to them in a moment, but we're going to start with the Georgia Bulldogs because their key player is Carson Beck, and he is back. He's waited a long time as Georgia's starting quarterback. Felt like one year wasn't enough. There's unfinished business, so he has decided at the moment to return, even though I really believe that if Carson Beck put his name in the NFL draft, I think by the time the draft process played itself out, He'd probably play his way into the first round. I think he might even play his way into the top 10. I think he's that good. I really believe that. So it's got to be frustrating that his only season as the starter, they did not make the college football playoff, and they obviously won't win the national championship. But coming off of back-to-back natties, the bar has set been very, very high. Bar has been set very high for Georgia. Now, Mike Bobo, I think, did a really good job as the offensive coordinator this year. Now, Todd Munkin... Filling those shoes was going to be really difficult. It's going to be really hard. And Mike Bobo stepped in. He brought Carson Beck along nicely. They didn't really open things up until they played against Kentucky week five or six. That's when things really started getting going. When they played against top 20 opponents, though, Carson Beck was at his best. Completed 74% of his passes, 15 touchdowns against just two interceptions when they played against top 20 opponents. So the better the competition, the better Carson Beck seemed to play. I also think what's amazing is that he was able to navigate throughout the season without all of his weapons available on a weekly basis. There were weeks when Brock Bowers missed. There were weeks when Ladin McConkie missed. There were weeks when both missed. And then they were out without Ra-Ra Thomas, who missed multiple games there at the end of the season with a foot injury. The offensive line has also been without some great players at times. Ratledge has missed some time. Amarius Mims has missed some time. His right guard and his right tackle have both been out. But Carson Beck's been steady, and he's been the guy that's guided them to this position. And I think he'll have a big, big opportunity to go against a really quality, high-quality secondary that Florida State has out there in the back end. Ladd McConkey is massive. Now, he's obviously one of the most reliable, one of the most experienced, but he has had a very difficult year. Back injury early, then he had an ankle injury, didn't play until Auburn, that was on September 30th, then he came out, played against Florida, balled out against Florida, I might add, six catches for 135 and a touchdown, then they dominated Florida, but down the stretch, there wasn't a whole lot, he sprained his ankle against Ole Miss, and we didn't see a whole lot for him, but he's an amazing route runner, he's got terrific top end speed, and he'll be the go-to guy in the passing game for the Georgia Bulldogs heading into this one. If you look at how Georgia wins the game, uh, I think it's a pretty simple solution. They have to be able to run the football. They have to be able to find ways. There's going to be some young receivers out there. There's going to be some guys with a little less experience, but those guys have a ton of talent. We're going to get a really good look at what Georgia's going to be in 2024 by watching the Orange Bowl game here in 2023. This is an offense that has great, great talent. Now, the defense is not quite the same as they've been in the past. They're excellent at safety, even teetering on the edge of being super elite at safety, I would say. I think they're excellent at one of the corner spots. I think the other corner is just okay, at least at this point of his development, but he has gotten better as the season's gone along. I think the defensive line is not what they've been in 21 and 22, particularly on the edges of the defense. Now, Michael Williams was a little banged up early. 
Really never found his footing until the end of the season. He, I think, is going to be massive for them as they go into this one. Chaz Chambliss already announced that he will be back next year. He, at times, has been up and down as well on the edges of the defense. So will Florida State be able to attack the edges of the defense? That's been a problem spot for the Georgia Bulldogs. Edge defense against the run. Can Florida State take advantage? But with Florida State, it's pretty simple. Uh, It's all about their personnel at the running back spot, whether it's Trey Benson, Lawrence Toafili, they're going to have to take the pressure off of Brock Glenn. Tate Rodemaker decided to enter the transfer portal. He will not play in the Orange Bowl game, so it's going to be all about being able to run the football. Now, Rodney Hill also entered the portal, so how will they divvy up the reps? I would think Toafili will get a lion's share. He announced that he's going to be coming back, so that is significant when you look at what he could mean for Florida State in this game. You look at the rest of the team, offensive line for the most part, they will have a few guys that they're without. Their defensive line, they'll have a few guys that they're without. It's really unfortunate because I would have loved to have seen Florida State at full strength heading into this game. We're just not going to have that. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be a little frustrating, frankly, because I would love to have seen how they would have competed. Even in the absence of Jordan Travis, I would love to have seen them compete against the Georgia Bulldogs with Georgia at full strength and Florida State at full strength so we could get an assessment as to whether or not Florida State should have been in the college football playoff. I would have loved to have seen it, but I understand. Guys got to do what's best for them, and guys don't feel like playing in the matchup is worth their while. That's their own personal decision. I won't be critical. I'm just disappointed as a college football fan because I'd have liked for them to have gone out there at full strength and said, see, this is what we could do. But we're just not going to have that luxury. How does Florida State win? Their defense has to play out of their mind. Uh, I mean, I I think that's it's it's pretty simple. The defense is going to have to play out of their mind. Now we've seen them do it already. We saw them do it against Louisville. But this is a significant step up in quarterback play. With no, with all due respect to Jack Plummer, Carson Beck is not going to go 0 for 13 with an interception on passes that are thrown 10 or more yards downfield. Just not going to happen. I also think that. It's going to be much more difficult for Florida State to cover the receivers because if you look at Louisville, if you look at some of the teams they play down the stretch, the receiver position, not quite as good as what they're going to see when they tee it up against the Dogs. So they're also, I think, going to have to make sure that they continue to apply pressure. I know they're going to be without some of their key pieces up front, but can they apply pressure to Carson Beck? Because when pressure is applied, he does drop off just a little bit. Just a little bit, but going to be very important, I think, for Florida State to apply pressure, and we're going to get a good look at what they might be moving forward. But either way, Florida State's going to have their hands full. I don't see how they can beat the Georgia Bulldogs. I just don't see it. I'd love, love nothing more than for them to shock the world yet again, but I'm trying to find a pathway to victory for the Knolls, and I think the only way they do it is by turning over Carson Beck and forcing a couple short fields because I'm just not confident in a Brock led Brock Glenn led offense to consistently put drives together enough to where they can knock off the Georgia Bulldogs.